Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Every day, Monday through Friday, you're invited to a new program on NBC as Jay Sims brings you inside news from Hollywood. Yes, this is another at NBC stellar daytime lineup of interesting and entertaining daytime radio programs. You'll enjoy such other favorites as Walter O'Keefe, who emcees America's funniest daily quiz program, Double or Nothing. Warren Hall, who presides over the program with a heart, Strike It Rich. And Tommy Bartlett, the MC with a roving microphone to welcome travelers as they stream through Chicago. And there's more entertainment, too, with Dial Dave Garraway. Dave has an easy, relaxed manner that's certain to give you an idea or two on how to beat the heat. And every day, Monday through Friday, NBC presents the two boys from Boston, who this year won the coveted Peabody Award, Bob and Ray. If you're tired of the same old thing on comedy shows, be sure to listen to Bob and Ray for a new concept of humor. A concept you're sure to enjoy. Now, here are tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Last Stop. It is Thursday night in July, 1931. A local passenger train speeds through the rocky country of West Texas. While the engineer watches the track ahead, the perspiring fireman shovels coal into the flaming firebox. Hey, steam gauge is still down, Whit. Oh, oh, bring it up, Charlie. Can't afford to lose no more time. Oh, yeah. yeah, we'll make it all right. I just hope it's enough. How are we doing now? Picked up 12 minutes. Still way behind schedule. Oh, well, we'll make it up, Charlie. 30 minutes? On a short run like this? Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, it's a darn shame we had to have a hot box. If that car whacker had done his job, we wouldn't have lost all this time. And trusting him won't help us none. Well, anyhow, the super can't blame us. No? Hey, say, did you see Mr. Evans? Uh-huh. Now, what did he say? I have to leave in December. When you get to be 65, you've got to retire. Well, you deserve a rest after all these years. Quit. What am I going to do with myself? I'll just be around the house all the time, getting in every way. Why, you'll be able to go out to the park and play checkers, sleep till noon. Ain't that what you always wanted? Oh, I used to think so. Hey, how much time do you think we'll make up? Oh, another ten minutes, maybe. We can pick up a couple of minutes on this downgrade. Well, let's see. Yeah, that'll still make us 33 minutes behind. Yeah. How's the gauge? 248, right on the nose. Hey, you know, Charlie, this retirement ain't so bad. Well, you and the missus to go back east. Visit your kinfolk, maybe. Wouldn't cost you. Hey, there's something on the track. Oh, huh? well, what is it? Oh, where? They're going to hit. Ah! Oh. 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 Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. Oh, where are you? Charlie. Charlie! Sheriff Wagner of Ravina was notified of the wreck. He alerted the railroad and local doctors. While a relief train was dispatched to the scene, the sheriff requested the assistance of the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned. 
he arrived as the last of the injured were being removed from the splintered coaches. Sheriff! Sheriff Wagner! Yes? Yeah. Over here, I have a good flare. Okay, Wagner. Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
Don't see what keeps it up. No. Sheriff, I think we're wasting our time here. Think maybe he's not coming back? Mm, can't tell with a man like that. Might have scared him off for good. Yeah. Especially if he did wreck that train. Uh-huh. Why don't we get somebody to keep an eye on this place? Then we can start looking for Carl again out in the brush. That's a good idea. Wait a minute, Sheriff. Get down. What is it, Jace? Over there. Other side of the clearing. Yeah. There he is. Just coming in now. He's making sure the coast is clear. Guess he figures it's safe. He's going in. Let's get him. No, not yet. Let him get inside first. Okay, let's go. Reckon he sees us coming? Now, that window's so dirty, I don't think he can see anything. Why don't you go around back, Sheriff? There might be another door. Okay. Give me time to get around there. Yeah. Open up, Carl. We know you're in there. Oh, what? We want to ask you some questions, Carl. How old are you? He's not going to open it, Chase. The door's locked. Open the door, Carl, or we'll break it down. How old are you? How old are you? I guess we'll have to, Sheriff. Yeah, it shouldn't be hard. It's pretty flimsy. You ready? Yeah. All right. Now. Oh, get out! Get out! Grab his arm, Sheriff. Hey, I'm... No! On the way into the sheriff's office, Carl sobbed and trembled hysterically. We could get no information from him. Sheriff Wagner and I saw it was necessary to let him calm down before continuing the questioning. We got Carl a hot meal and let him rest. We put the railroad tie in the sheriff's office. A few hours later, we sent for Carl. Come in here, young fella. Sit down, Carl. You still mad at me? No, we're not mad at you, Carl. We want to know about that train. Dirty trains. One of them killed Mary. Who's Mary? Mary's this cow, Jay. It's the one that got hit. Is that why you were yelling at the train? Yeah. I, I, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I... Tell us, Carl. Is that why you ran away? You thought we chased you because you yelled at the train? Well, didn't you? No, that wasn't the reason. You know what happened to the other train? Yeah. Got busted up. Did you do that, Carl? No. No, I, 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 I just yelled at the train. What were you doing yesterday? Well, I was home for a spell taking care of my goats. How about yesterday evening? What were you doing then? I was over at the Radfords. Who do you mean, George Radford? Huh? What were you doing over there? We was killing hogs. What time did you leave the Radfords, Carl? Oh, no, not for a long time. They give me supper. Mrs. Radford's a nice lady. Sheriff, you better call him. Find out if Carl was over there yesterday and what time he left. Okay, Jase. Carl. Did you go down by the tracks before the train was wrecked last night? No. George? I, I don't like trains. This is Sheriff. You see that railroad tie in the corner? Yeah. That was the tie that wrecked the train. Well, did did you, you put it on the tracks? No. Well, thanks, George. No, I, I, I didn't do it. Bye. Yes. That train was wrecked about nine, wasn't it? That's what Mr. Morton said. And Carl here didn't do it. How do you know? He didn't leave the Radfords till ten. <laughs> In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. On our highways, excessive speed is the number one killer. It takes more than half of the lives lost in traffic accidents in many states. Last year, speeding drivers caused 15,000 deaths in the United States. Only you as a driver can help reduce the terrifying toll of human lives. Slow down for safety's sake. And you'll be doing your part in the current campaign against the number one killer on the highways, speed. Control your speed at all times to keep within the safe speed, not just the legal limit. 
The men who drive for a living, America's professional truck drivers, are taught that excessive speed for driving conditions is a major cause of many motor accidents. They're taught to drive ahead of themselves and to avoid accidents by seeing them threaten before they can happen. You can learn to do this, too. Always keep your eyes on the road ahead and avoid rushing headlong into that fatal accident. Remember, speed kills. Slow down. The life you save may be your own. Now back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Last Stop. After we took Carl home, we checked at the hospital. The doctor told us the fireman of the wreck train, Whit Bernard, was in fair condition and that amputation was not necessary. The doctor gave us permission to talk to him and walked down to Bernard's room. Mr. Bernard? Yeah? I'm Ranger Pearson. This is the sheriff. Yeah? We'd like to find out what happened, Mr. Bernard. Told me Charlie's dead. Yes, sir. Mr. Bernard, do you remember what happened just before the wreck? Well, I, I just sat down. Charlie yelled there was something on the tracks, and we was going to hit it. And grabbed the brake. That's all I remember. You didn't see anyone then? Standing by the track, maybe? No. How fast was your train going? Oh, about 60. Maybe it should have been speeding like that down those grades. Charlie may be, be alive now. We've been going slower. Might have been able to stop. You were going faster than usual? Yeah. We were behind schedule. Supposed to be in Blankford just about the time they jumped the tracks. About nine, huh? Who no. Eight thirty. Well, we understood the wreck didn't happen until nine. Oh no, it it was closer to eight thirty. Are you sure? Yeah. Looked at my watch just as we topped the rise. Sheriff. <laughs> that rancher, Mr. Morden, called you a little after nine. That's right, Jase. It was 9.05. And he claimed his boys saw it happen just a couple of minutes before that. He sure did. Why did he tell us that? With his lung? I don't know. Let's go over there and find out. The sheriff and I went to the Morton Ranch. We arrived there about sundown. Mr. Morton was just coming out on the porch as we drove up. Howdy, Ranger. Sheriff. Howdy. Hello, Martin. I was just about to call my boy into supper. How about eating with us? No, thanks. I'm making a pot of mulligan. Here's a plenty. No, thanks. We'd like some straight answers to a few questions. Well, sure thing. We're pretty sure now on what caused the wreck. Is this so? Where was it? Somebody put a tie across the tracks. You mean on purpose? Mm-hmm. Why, wow, that's awful. That's the same as murder. It sure is. You called the sheriff at five minutes after nine last night. Is that right? I guess so. The sheriff remember the time. And how long before that did your boys tell you about the wreck? Oh, less than a minute. I phoned right away. Where were the boys standing when they saw it happen? Up on that hill behind the house. Come on back. I'll show you. Did they hear the crash? Yeah. How come you didn't hear? Well, I was in the house and... The hill's in the way, I guess. There it is. Couldn't have taken them more than a couple of minutes to reach the house from there. No. Mind if we ask your boys about this? No, of course not. Come on. Young Dan's over in the barn, milking. What's the matter, Sheriff? Something wrong? I'll tell you, Mr. Morton. According to what you say, the wreck must have taken place about 9 o'clock. It actually happened at 8.30. It couldn't have. We want to know why you're a half hour off, Mr. Morton. Well, I... I don't know. I can't understand it. Say, you don't think I had anything to do with the wreck? We don't know yet, but somebody did. Well, I'll tell you right now, it wasn't me. Maybe your boys will be able to tell us something. Come on. I just don't get it. You sure it wasn't an accident? We're sure. Dan! Yeah, Paul. Dan, didn't you tell me... Hold on, Mr. Morton. We'd like to ask the questions. All right, Ranger. Dan, this is Sheriff Wagner and Ranger Pearson. 
They want to talk to you. Howdy. Dan, exactly where were you when you saw the train wreck last night? Well, we were up on the hill looking for some stock that wandered off. Ain't that right, Pa? Yeah, son. Did you come down and tell your father right away? Yeah, as soon as we saw it. Are you sure you didn't stay a while to watch? Oh, oh no, sir. We rode right down. Rogers, what did you see? Well, we heard a big, awful noise. We looked down that way. We just saw the end of the crash, kind of, just as the cars were falling over. You saw them turn over? Yes. Yes, sir, we did. Son, are you sure you saw it? Yeah, Pa. If you don't mind, Mr. Morton, let us ask the boy. Dan? Yes, sir? Tell me the truth now. Did you go down to the wreck before you came home to tell your father? No, we didn't. Harkness. Did you ever handle a railroad tie, Dan? Tie? You ever want to put one on a track to see what would happen when a train hit it? No. No, I never did. How long do you figure it took you to come down the hill? Just a couple of minutes. We came right away, honest. You couldn't have, Dan. The train was wrecked a half hour earlier than you say. Well... Dan, did you put the tie on the tracks? <laughs> How about it? Was it you? I, I didn't want it. Mike made me help him. There, there, son. Ranger, I feel sick. My own boy, he did this awful thing. Why did you do it, son? Lloyd, he, he said he'd show me how to bust up a big log without any work. Oh, Dad, I, I didn't want to, but, but he called me a, a sissy. Go on. Well, I, I helped him drag one of the ties out of the track. You waited there and watched the train hit it. Yes, sir. But, but when the train went down the bank and, and all the cars piled up, well, well, we got scared and rode away. <laughs> Floyd made me promise not to tell. Where is Floyd? <laughs> On his way to Houston, I guess. You mean you don't know where your son is? He is not my son. He's my boss's son. You see, I'm a tenant farmer here. Mr. Osborne owns the place. He lives in Houston. What's the boy been doing out here? Well, he kept getting in trouble at home. Father sent him to military school. When that didn't do any good, he asked me to take him for the summer. Thought it might straighten Floyd out being here. And I thought it was starting to do some good. When did he leave? This afternoon. I thought it was kind of funny why he wanted to leave all of a sudden. I had to talk him out of it, but he said no, he wanted to go home. So I called his father long distance. Dad said, put him on the bus. Did you? Yeah. Which bus was it? The one at four o'clock. I got him into town by two, but we just missed that bus. Did you see him get on the four o'clock bus? Yeah, sure. I waited with him. Didn't want him to take it, because he'd have to stay in Bismarck tonight and catch the morning bus for Houston, but... No, he was set on going today. Do you have a picture of Floyd you can give us? Well, I got a snapshot of the two kids together. That'll do. We'll see if we can catch up to him in Bismarck. I'm afraid your boy's going to have to come into town with us, Mr. Oh, Bob, Bob! Look, he wasn't Dan's fault. He's got no mother to raise him, and I guess I better go out and get him. He didn't do a good enough job. We have no choice, Mr. Morton. He wouldn't have done it if it hadn't have been for Floyd. Floyd's 17, he's two years older, and he was always talking Dan into things. Oh, that's Floyd's a great talker. Every time I call him down about something, he'd talk himself out of it. Don't worry, Mr. Morton. He won't talk himself out of this. We took Dan Morton and his father to the sheriff's office in Ravina. Then Sheriff Wagner and I drove to Bismarck. The baggage clerk at the trailway's bus station there identified Floyd Osborne from his photograph as having checked a suitcase at 7 o'clock. There was no bus leaving for Houston until 9.15 the following morning. During the night, we canvassed a number of hotels, but were unable to locate the boy. The next morning, we were back in the bus station, standing next to the Houston bus. Floyd Osborne still hadn't shown up. If that kid don't hurry, he's going to miss this bus. Yeah, he's still got time. They've got ten minutes before they pull out. What if he doesn't show up? Well, then we'll get him at home. What do you think he's doing? Waiting till the last minute? Yeah, looks like it. 
Let me see that snapshot of the two kids, Jake. I just want to be sure I'll know them. Yeah, I hear you. Never mind, Sheriff. Here he comes. You were in a hurry. Must have overslept. Let's take him. Hey, 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 let go. Well, what do you think you're doing? Cut it out, son. Hey, Hold still. I... Your name Floyd Osborne? Yeah. Yeah, so what? This is Ranger Pearson, and I'm the sheriff of this county. Well, what about it? You were staying with Mr. Morton, weren't you? Well, is that a crime? No. I reckon the train is. What? Well, now, you don't think I wrecked that train. Who's been telling you stories? It's no use, Floyd. We know you did it. Why, this is crazy. I'm the one who reported the wreck. Well, why, me and Dan was two miles away from there when we saw it. You and Dan laid a tie across the tracks. You were right there when it happened. That's a dirty lie. We don't think it is. Well, it is. Look, 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 if you want the truth, I'll tell you. Dan did it. I I told him not to. It was Dan who did it. That's no good, Floyd. Dan's not big enough to have carried that heavy tie all by himself. Well... Oh, well, his father helped him. Yeah, old man Morton, he, him and Dan did it. I don't think the court's going to believe that either, Floyd. Well, you're not taking me to any court. Brandon Gates, stop that chair. Stop Floyd, that stop. Floyd, stop. He's going to get a hit for that car. Oh, oh, Gosh, it was close. Stop. There he goes, running toward the drugstore. Stop, Floyd. Come here. Oh, you hit my arm. You're not hurt. You're not running away again. I didn't mean to wreck that train. I just wanted to see what would happen. Well, now you know. And you'll never forget it as long as you live. Come on. <laughs> In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Every day of the week, during your every waking hour, NBC is sending the finest in radio entertainment to homes around the world. Monday night is music night on NBC with such stellar programs as the Voice of Firestone, the Railroad Hour, and the Telephone Hour. Tuesdays bring a variety of evening programs. For mystery, there's Barry Craig, confidential investigator, and the adventures of the Scarlet Pimpernel. And for fun-filled listening on Tuesdays, hear Truth or Consequences and meet your match. Wednesday evening, more people listen to Groucho Marx and the Great Gildersleeve than to any other radio shows in America. You want to join the millions who know that Groucho and Gildy each will provide top radio entertainment. Then Thursday evenings, be sure to hear Mystery on NBC with some of the best adventure programs on the air. Dragnet is just one of the fine Thursday night shows on NBC. And so it goes throughout the entire week. This station joins with NBC to provide you with great radio entertainment. And now, the conclusion of Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Floyd Osborne and Dan Morton were brought to trial on January 8th, 1932. Because of the nature of the crime and his extreme youth, Dan Morton was released in the custody of his father. Floyd Osborne was sent to the state school for boys at Gatesville. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. cast included Tony Barrett, Leo Curley, Bert Holland, Ken Christie, Whitfield Connor, and Jeffrey Silver. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Robert A. White, and the program was produced and directed by Stacey Keats. Tales of the Texas Rangers is heard weekly overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Hal Gibney speaking. Tonight, hear the Hollywood Bowl concert on NBC.